so good to be in worship uh, with you. If you're here, I uh, hope you feel welcomed and loved. If you're online, we've got an online host that would love to connect with you if you're new uh, to Brandywine and get you connected. You know, typically we start by celebrating the candle and unfortunately it's not lit. Uh, we do that obviously to celebrate when someone gives their life to Christ through the influence of our church. So if you know of someone, please let us know. But uh, what we can celebrate is that God's presence is here with us today. And so why don't we just begin by thanking him for that and celebrating that. He is so faithful to be in our midst, uh, to make this feel like home because that's what it's like to be in his presence. And so uh, we're thankful for that. Uh, we are continuing our series uh, called Different because normal isn't working. And uh, the motivation behind this series is for us as Christ followers to live different, to think different, to be different than what is normal. And it doesn't take you long to evaluate our culture and even the condition of the world uh, and know that normal is being driven by fear. More normal is being divisive. Normal is being easily offended. Normal is having hate in our heart or being overwhelmed with our life and our resources, our finances, overwhelmed with doubt, debt. And so for us as believers, we want to be honest with what's normal. We want to be inspired by God's spirit to not follow the patterns of this world, to begin to think and live differently so that our light can shine as Jesus calls us to, to stand out, to act different, to think different. And the motivation behind this series is really rooted in Romans 12, 1 and 2. And it says this, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy, that means set apart different sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Let's just pray. Lord, we thank you for the power of this word and Lord, how you call us to be different. And Lord, we know that different living comes first with thinking different. Lord, you bring us to think about your love for us and the salvation that we can find through Jesus. You bring us to accept that, to be forgiven, to live on mission. And so Lord, we just give you permission in every aspect of our lives. Help us think different, help us live different. Help us to be a light in a world that desperately needs you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, if there is one area of uh, our culture and just life that we really need to think and live differently in, uh, we really believe that's in the area of finances. You know, uh, normal in our culture, normal for many of us uh, here in person or online is being stressed about finances, stressed about money. Anybody relate? Amen. Right? It's just, it's hard. It's hard to do finance as well. It's hard to win with money. It's normal uh, for us to work as hard as we can and at the end of the week feel like the money's going out quicker than it's coming in. It's normal for many of us just to live without a budget or a game plan for our finances, to consider purchases based on what the monthly payment's gonna be instead of a overall cost to us, and eventually to feel and even be overwhelmed with debt. That's normal. And we don't want to be normal. We don't, as a church, want to be normal. Your generosity has actually led us, as we started 2020, to be debt-free. Incredible generosity and favor and blessing from God on us as a church family. And we have a desire for each and every one of us, individuals and families, to experience financial peace and freedom. To live different to think different. And that's why we've invested, if you haven't heard, we've invested in a, an incredible resource that we're gonna gift to you today for the next two years called the Ramsey Plus resource. It is the best tools, the best resources to help you win in money, with money and in, in the resources that God's entrusted to you. And we've purchased that for you as a gift because we love you and we want you to win. But before we even get to the idea of what to do with our money, what to do with resources, how to handle it. We really need to understand what is financial freedom? What's it really all about? Is it about a paycheck or a bank account? Is it about having assets or having so much in my retirement? 
Well, we want to define it. We want to define it this morning. This is what financial freedom is. Financial freedom starts with trusting in God's provision for you as you apply biblical principles to your life and finances. Trusting in God's provision as you apply biblical principles to your life and finances, which means today, each and every one of us, regardless of what situation we're in financially, can start to experience freedom. As we start to trust God and we start to honor him in how we handle what he's entrusted to us. See, it doesn't matter how much we have or don't have. I can live in extreme poverty and trust God and apply his principles to my life and have peace and freedom. Or I can be a millionaire and think it's all about me and all about what I do and never experience real freedom in my finances. And so together as a family, we want to journey toward freedom together because it's possible. It's possible, but it takes intentionality, it takes focus, and it takes a desire to honor God with all that he's provided for us. You know, too often we miss out on the blessing that God has for our lives, specifically in the area of money or finances, because it's just easy to disconnect that from the rest of our lives. Maybe disconnect that in our minds from our spiritual journey. But Jesus often spoke about money and he spoke about how it was all interconnected. He, t- he teaches us in his word how to handle money, how to live and give generously how to stay away from the traps of materialism and greed and how our resources and how we handle them are connected to every aspect of our life. So that's why he spoke about work. He spoke about money. He spoke about investment. He spoke about how we handle those things more than any other topic because it's so much a part of what we do and how we go about living life. And so today we want to just look at the blessing that God has for us when we start to honor him as our provider and we start to make the decision to apply the principles that he's laid out for us in his word to our life and to our finances. I wanna think about this for a second, even before we get too far along. Think about a time where you trusted God to provide for you and you knew he was the only one that could come through and he was faithful and he came through. By show of hand, anybody ever experienced that? Think about a time in your life maybe when it was hard, but you walked obediently and you made choices financially and with your life that you knew God wanted you to do and you sensed peace in his favor on your life. Anybody? Or think about a time when you gave of yourself, your time, your talents, your treasures freely for the benefit of others. You lived generously and you experienced the joy of what it means to love and to give freely. Anybody relate? See, when we, when we talk about finances, it's not that finances is disconnected from how we relate to God, but actually it's an ultimate, ultimately it's an opportunity for us to know the character of God, to know how good and faithful he is, to know how loving and generous he is, to know as that last song reminded us how his favor wants to be on us. That's his desire for each and every one of us and to live the way he's called us to. But how do we get there? How do we experience that? How do we think and live differently than this world? That's what Romans, again, calls us to do. Calls us to live different by thinking differently. And so in the few minutes that we have uh, this morning, we're gonna talk about two financial mindsets that have the power to change our life and our future. And after we talk about that, the approach that we take, then uh, Joan Wilson is going to come out and talk all about the resources that we're providing. But we have to start with reconciling our heart and our mind to approach things the way the Bible calls us to, to approach them with a couple attitudes that are so essential. See, the Bible is clear that everything that we have, every breath that we take, every relationship we're given, every resource entrusted to us is a gift from God, and it's given to us to manage and steward in a way that honors him and blesses other people. And so if we're gonna think differently than the world, we gotta start with the idea of thinking about ourselves as a steward. It's the mindset of a stewardship. If you're following along on your app or if you picked up a, a bulletin this morning, we have to have the mindset and the condition of our heart has to be the idea of a steward or stewardship, which means that God owns everything and you and I, we're called to manage it, to steward it because he's entrusted it to us. This is part of just taking a biblical worldview of life. If you look at 
the, the uh, story of scripture, we know that he spoke everything into existence. He has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of our lives and for everything that exists in all of the universe. And so the idea of a stewardship is just falling into his design for life. In fact, when he created the first man and woman, Adam and Eve, he said what? Take care of what I've provided. Take care of what I've created. Take care of, work hard to manage all that I've given to you. And so for us, we got to reconcile that in our mind, in our heart, and see ourselves as a steward. That's why Psalm 24, 1, listen to what it says. It says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all of its people belong to him. Anything that we have is because of his creation, his favor, his blessing on our life. He owns it all. We have a temporary role in it, but he has the ultimate and the eternal role of owner. Furthermore, in Colossians 1, uh, Paul talks about the purpose that is behind all of creation. He, he says this, speaking of Christ, he says, Christ is the vib- visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all of creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones and kingdoms, rulers and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. See, if we begin to understand and to think differently, to see ourselves as a steward of the resources God gives us, then it frees us immediately. It frees us because we know he is our provider. And we know that he gives us guidance and wisdom and how to live, how to save, how to give. And that's all found in his word. The owner knows how to use what he's created. And so we can humble ourselves and we can experience the freedom of saying, God, I trust you. I trust you to provide exactly as I need. I trust that the truth that comes from your word will be for my blessing and the benefit of others so that I can live generously and bless others. Freedom starts with this idea of stewardship, of reconciling in our heart, God, you're my provider and I trust you. Just as I've trusted you for the forgiveness of my sins, I'm gonna trust that you know every detail of my life and every need that I have and you will be faithful and you will provide. And so we can start with that mindset, the the idea of a steward, trusting God. It's that invitation to trust him more. Second, we need a mindset of contentment. I'll be honest, this is where it gets pretty hard, especially in our our culture and the time that we live in. Contentment is intentionally choosing joy and satisfaction in what God has provided while resisting the pressure to always attain more. See, we live in a unique period of time where we are constantly being bombarded with ads and and messages to convince us that what we have is not enough. It's going to be that next thing that will bring us happiness. That newer, that nicer thing will bring us more comfort or joy. That next thing, though, never fulfills its promise. That next thing, that lifestyle of always thinking about what's next instead of just settling in and caring for what we have, that never satisfies. And that's why in Hebrews 13, 5, listen to what it says. It says, don't love money, but be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. See, it takes hard work to resist what's normal in this world. It takes hard work to guard our hearts and to trust that God is going to provide what we need, not necessarily what we want, and that he can be trusted no matter what. It means that we're going to resist the temptation to just follow the patterns of this world. And this is especially hard because we are, again, marketed to in every way. Anybody ever have that time where you're talking with somebody about a product or an idea, and then the next time you turn on your phone or your TV, it's right there, the ad's right there. I mean, I don't want to get into conspiracy theories, but like, that's a little weird, right? There's, a, there's an entire industry of marketing psychologists whose goal is to get us to make the next purchase. That's it. Not because we need it, but because they get paid when we do it. And so for us, we got to make a decision of, are we going to follow that? Are we going to be guided by the messages of our culture, the messages hitting us or are we going to trust 
and maybe God's plan for us. Listen to what Luke says and how that contrasts what we're experiencing. Uh, Jesus said this in Luke 12, 15. He said, beware, guard against every kind of greed for life is not measured in how much you own. See, at the core of all that marketing, at that core of that desire to have that next thing, to not be content, is the idea that my worth, my value, is in that next purchase. My values in what house I have, what car I have, what I can afford or even not afford. But let me tell you this, the truth of the Bible is that our value and our identity is not in what we possess, but who possesses us? Who owns us? Who has bought us by the shedding of his blood? The, the gift of being forgiven of our sins and having an eternal identity as God's child is far more valuable than anything we could ever possess in this world. And anything we possess in this world we know is temporal. It won't last. But who I am in Christ lasts for eternity. And so for us, we see that this, as we approach our finances, it's not just about money, but it's about our spiritual identity. It's about trusting in who God has called us to be. And it's about living differently because we have an identity that's different than the world. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so for us as believers, as a church family, we wanna think differently, we wanna live differently because that's what we've been called to. We don't wanna follow the patterns of this world and be stressed and overwhelmed and live recklessly, but we wanna see God as our provider. We wanna see him as our sustainer and as the one who satisfies our soul. Because here is the devastating thing for our families, for our lives as individuals, and for our future, is most of the time when we're being convinced to buy that next thing, to do that next purchase, or to seek that next experience, we're not doing it with money that we have, but we're doing it through financing and loans and credit cards with money that we don't have. Listen to the warning that Proverbs gives us. In 22.7, it says, just as the rich rule the poor, so the borrower is servant to the lender. And this is where we can really live different as believers because it's normal to just finance everything. And you can finance almost anything in this world, but it just piles up and piles up and leaves us devastated. Never in the Bible is debt applied in a good term. Never does it have positive outcome. And if we look around what's normal, we know that, we feel that. In fact, just in 2019, this, this statistic grieved my heart. Banks just in America collected $122 billion from American consumers in interest payments alone. Just interest payments. Some of us, we feel that because we're, we got credit card debt and we're overwhelmed with it. That is just money that is going and we get nothing for it. We want to think different. We want to live different. We want our families to be blessed as we apply biblical principles to our lives. That's God's desire for each and every one of us. And it takes hard work. It takes resources and a game plan. And that's why we're so excited about journeying together as a church through the Ramsey Plus curriculum and the resources there so that we can get a game plan. We can think different and we can live different together. And then we can experience that favor and that freedom but again, it starts even today with seeing ourselves as a steward of the resources God gives us, seeing ourselves and committing to a life of contentment and peace with what God's provided, not overextending, living intentionally. And it takes time. You know, in Proverbs 13, 11, it says this, it says, wealth from get rich quick schemes quickly disappears, but wealth from hard work grows over time. This isn't always glorious, making the hard decisions of living on a budget and eliminating debt and doing everything that we're going to do, but it grows over time. And we receive that favor and that blessing on our lives day in and day out as we trust in God, and as we apply his principles to our lives and our finances. And so as we talk about the Ramsey Plus, I'm gonna invite uh, Joan Wilson uh, to the stage. She's gonna tell you all about the resources that are made available to you today. She's our church accountant, our Celebrate Recovery Ministry Assistant. And it was really her burden and her desire and vision for us to make this investment as a church. So will you give it up for Joan? Give her a welcome.
Pastor Paul taught today, God wants us to handle our money wisely. When we do, we experience that contentment from being a good steward. And we also avoid the pitfalls that come when we don't manage our finances well. Financial wisdom isn't something that we're taught in school, and our, most of our parents didn't teach us either. And because we didn't know any better, we've let the world convince us that, the, I, that debt is not just normal, but that it's necessary. We've got car payments, student loans, credit cards. We even take out tax anticipation loans because we can't wait three or four weeks for the government to mail us a tax refund. This is all normal. But Brandywine, we're not gonna be normal anymore. We're gonna be different because normal isn't working, is it? Imagine what your life would be like if you didn't have any debt payments. Really think about this. No mortgage, no car payment, no debt at all. What could you do with that money? You could save for retirement. You could take a nice vacation without coming back to a big credit card bill. You could even be generous. What would it feel like to have the peace of mind knowing that if your car broke down or your furnace gave out, that you would just pull money from savings and take care of it immediately. No stress, no drama, no asking others for help. If we will live like no one else today by having a game plan for our finances, making some sacrifices like cutting back on cable or eating out less, and we avoid unnecessary spending, then later we can live and give like no one else by being debt free, having an emergency fund, and saving for retirement. That's good stewardship. Me mastering these financial disciplines will bring glory to God and peace and contentment to us. Now it's one thing to understand the idea of being a financial steward and to want to do it. It's a whole nother thing to actually know how to do it. And still another to develop the discipline to follow through with it. And that's where the church wants to help you. The leadership here at Brandywine has made an investment in a Ramsey Plus site license. Now what this means to you is that each and every family in our church is receiving a free all access membership to the best money content and tools available. Now some of you may already be familiar with Dave Ramsey and Financial Peace University, but for those who aren't, let's watch this video to find out more. Taking charge of your money shouldn't be hard. That's why we created Financial Peace University. These nine video lessons will help you learn our proven plan, the seven baby steps. You'll learn how to crush debt for good, save like never before, and stop stressing about money. Financial Peace University not only teaches you how to win with money, but it gives you the tools to get ahead faster. That includes our investment calculator, debt payoff tool, and the best budgeting app on the planet, Every Dollar Plus. It makes budgeting easy and connects to your bank. The best part is you get access to all of it for a year with your subscription. As a bonus, Financial Peace University includes additional courses because winning with money is a lifelong journey. Financial Peace University works. In fact, the first 90 days, people pay off $5,300 of debt on average. Nearly 6 million people have gone through it, and you could be next. It's simple to get started. Financial Peace University is completely online, so you can take it from home or in person with a group near you. You don't have to wait another day to stop living paycheck to paycheck. We can show you how. Go from saying, I've had it, to I've got this with Financial Peace University. Now, that video just highlights Financial Peace University, but your Ramsey Plus membership provides so much more than that. This is a wraparound resource that will provide the information, support, and tools that you need to be successful with your money. In addition to the FPU lessons, you'll get that every dollar budgeting app that includes free access to link your bank account. You'll get the Baby Steps Tracker app. You'll get the Legacy Journey curriculum and so many more resources that we can't even outline them for you today. We just don't have time. 
Now, if you were to go and purchase this for yourself, it would cost you $130 for a one-year membership. Now, I don't have my calculator with me, but I think for two years, that means it's a value of $260. Now, the church is providing this to you completely free. We want everyone to have financial peace, so we're excited to help you get there. So here are the three action steps that we're encouraging you to take. Number one, make the decision today to activate your membership and explore the website. My favorite teacher in the FPU videos is Chris Hogan, and on his podcast, he often talks about two-year decisions. We need to make decisions today that two years from now we'll be really pleased with. And I don't think anyone, two years from now, will regret learning and practicing the biblical way to handle money. So let's each commit today to accept and make the most of this gift. Action step two, actually follow through with your decision and activate your membership and explore the website this week. If you're here in the building, there's flyers uh, by the exits, um, so pick up a flyer. They have all the information you need to activate your Ramsey Plus membership and set up your account. And if you're watching online, the online host is posting a link so you have that same information. All right, last one, action step three, register for a Financial Peace University or a Legacy Journey class. You can watch these lessons at home. You have access to absolutely everything today. So you can watch at home, but I'm encouraging you to roll in the class. It will provide the support and encouragement that you need to keep moving when things get difficult. We'll be offering classes starting in January, but we need you to start registering now so that we can plan out how many classes we need. We'll publish the dates and the times for you to choose from at a later date. And for those of you that are unable to, uh, to participate in person, we'll also offer Zoom classes for both of those. To register for those classes, you'll see a link uh, to the registration form on our website, or you can go to the Brandywine app. Just click on the sign up tile and scroll down till you see the Ramsey Plus registration form. Our goal is that every family in our church benefits from these tools and classes. If you've never taken Financial Peace University, now is your time. This is your season to be intentional with your finances and get serious about getting out of debt and saving for the future. And if you have already completed Financial Peace, we're, we'd like you to go through it again. The seven baby steps are a lifestyle, and you may have gotten stuck on your debt snowball or paying off your mortgage early. We want you to get that gazelle intensity back and pick up where you may have left off. The lessons also cover a variety of topics like insurance and wills that are a good refresher for any of us. Now, for some of us, I've already overwhelmed you. It's coming out like a fire hose, I get it. If that's you, we've got you covered too. Next week, uh, Sunday, October 11th, we're gonna hold what we're calling a jumpstart class right here in the auditorium after second service. We're gonna walk through the account setup process, downloading the apps, and we'll demo the website so that you can see everything that's available to you and you can ask questions. There's no need to register for that, just show up next Sunday after second service right here. If you have any problems or questions activating your account uh, or, or even what your next steps are, please feel free to call me or email me here at the church. You know, we've all made some bad, some bad decisions in the past. Wherever you are in your financial journey, no matter how hopeless it may seem, today starts a new chapter. We're going to learn from our mistakes and we're going to learn new ways, God's ways to handle money. We truly believe that as we follow these principles, marriages are about to be transformed, family trees are about to change, and we're going to experience the freedom that comes from, from the peace of handling money God's ways. We can't wait to hear your success stories in the weeks, the months, even the years to come. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joan. We are, again, so excited about this. Uh, but again, just to remind us that the tools are there, uh, but we can reconcile the attitude of our heart and our mind even today as we close to see ourselves as a steward of what God entrusts us to try to live with contentment, a simple life, 
the way he calls us to. And then to apply this great resource to our life, no matter where you're at uh, in, your, in your financial journey, it can apply to you and bring a greater sense of peace and freedom to you. And so 